Bella's hip navigation for a standard arthritic hip. This case starts with first looking at an AP pelvis for leg length inequality. I use an AP hip for templating. I do not use a calibration ball on my x-rays. So for a male patient, I will estimate their femoral head size is 51 millimeters in diameter. I can recalibrate my templating in the operating room after I've measured their actual head size. Using the Vela's templating function for this patient, I've selected a 56 millimeter cup and a size 10 high offset stem with a plus 1.5 head. I'm wanting to lengthen this patient four to five millimeters. Before cutting the femur, you need to obtain an image of the proximal femur with the pubic symphysis and the greater trochanter in the image. This image is referenced later for the one trial analysis. I use the templated image in surgery to verify the level of my neck cut. Cut the neck and measure the head size. The sales consultant then marks out the relevant points on the AP image to be referenced later while surgery continues. Ream to acetabulum and select the cup size. Placement of the cup is done by first obtaining a neutral pelvic image. The cup is impacted using concise. Bellis is then used to tell you your current cup position. My first attempt here, my cup is too vertical. With concise, the cup is easily repositioned and I then take an additional x-ray. Here the cup is in my preferred safe zone with the goal for this patient being near 43 degrees of inclination and 23 degrees of aniversion. A real liner is placed. The proximal femur is exposed and broached using concise. A trial brooch with neck and head are placed for trial. With this patient, I opted to trial with a size 10 standard stem and a plus 1.5 head. I had templated a high offset stem, but you can trial with whatever combination you would like and the software will give you the same information you need to make a final implant decision. Once the trial is in place, you then obtain another AP hip image. This is then used by the sales consultant to register the reference points. You then run the Vela software and a one trial chart is generated. This chart demonstrates the modularity options of the selected hip implants and their effects on leg length and offset. For a typical arthritic hip, my goal is to add length as determined off of my preoperative exam and radiographic measurements. I also want the femoral offset to be positive and the total offset to not increase. Looking at this chart, there are several good choices that a surgeon can choose from depending upon the goals of surgery. Alternatively, there are less desirable choices that could result in leg length or instability issues. So for this patient, I want the numbers to be plus length, plus femoral offset, and a neutral or slightly negative total offset. Based off the one trial data generated here, I like where the patient's leg length is with a plus 1.5 head. However, with the standard offset stem, I have a negative femoral offset and a negative total offset. It's easy to see looking at this chart that if I select the high offset stem, I'll give the patient the same amount of length, but I'll have a positive femoral offset number and a neutral or slightly negative total offset number, which is my goal. I then select and implant the high offset stem with a plus 1.5 head. The real implants can then be inserted and the surgery can end. In this case, I opted to rerun the one trial with the final implants in place. The final numbers with the high offset stem are plus four millimeters of length, plus four millimeters of femoral offset, and a neutral total offset. I know from the data generated here that the patient's leg length has been restored and he will have a stable hip with these offset numbers. This demonstrates the ease of use of the one trial analysis with Vela's hip navigation to go from trial to final implants with accurate data-driven decisions.